Hi guys, welcome to this My Titan Solo of the Zero Hour mission. Uh, we're doing it on Middle Tree of Defender class. I'm actually using Void Ball Grenade, not not Magnetic. I changed to Magnetic for the boss, but I start with Void Wall. We're using roughly the same weapons by the Thunderlord. We're going to be using Long Shadow, Subtle Calamity, Oxygen, Recluse, and Mananan. All the Year 2 versions have a major spec on it. I think my sniper has boss spec on it. We're starting with Thunderlord, and yes, we are changing to Whisper, and I'll speak about that as we're going forward. My helmet and my mark have machine gun reserves on it, but I will be changing to sniper reserves on the helmet, sniper scavenger on the mark. I'll also be switching to Doomfang pauldrons for the tank room, and then for the jumping phase, I'll be switching to line rampants. So... I've chose Middle Tree because of those Void Detonator ability that gives you back Grenade and Melee. Really good for helping you get your grenades back if you put it on bigger enemies. And you'll see that right, all, right at the start. And I chose the Thunderlord over the Delirium because I wanted to see if I got more Whisper Ammo when I switched from... Because I was only getting like one round when I was switching from the Delirium. So I wanted to see if the, the, the Thunderlord gave me more ammo on switching because it was an exotic. Switching from an exotic... To an exotic, I was wondering if the ammo uh, economy was different for exotics. And it turns out that it was, because I had half, I had about 110 rims left when I switched to the Whisper. Which is about half its normal capacity. When I'd done that with the Delirium, I got one round. If when I switched with half its capacity. But with the Whisper, I got three rounds. So, it worked. Now we're going to change to the Oxygen, because we've, we took out that first room. And we're also going to now change to a Sniper Scavenger and Sniper Reserves. So once we take out the Arc Shanks in this room, we'll switch to the Whisper. So that we can start collecting any any heavy. The gauntlets I've got on, the reason I don't didn't start with the Doom Fangs is the gauntlets I've got on have got a heavy ammo finder. And even though that's like the worst type of RNG, it is the worst type of RNG in this game. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's like... <laughs> it's it, it's it goes along the condom philosophy. I'd rather have it and not need one than need it and not have one. So that's that's is one of my favorite lines from a film. So so even though we want to drop some heavy, we want to give ourselves the opportunity to drop some heavy. So that's why I'm leaving it to the last possible minute to switch to the Doom Fangs. Which we will do after we clear this room. So once we've took out the snipers, we took out that saber shank to the left. Take out those sniper shanks, and then what we're going to do is get Thunderlord back on, and clear these these uh, arc shanks. Now that they are gone, uh, I just press reload on instinct. We're going to change to the whisper, and as you can see, we have about 110 rounds, and we've got three. So as long as you've got three for the next two weeks, well, oh, for forever, but you'll. You, not forever. Once you, if you've got, if you've got three rounds, you'll get those rounds back. But as long as you've got three rounds, you'll you'll reload from from your reserves. What? Uh, I'll speak about it during the jumping puzzle. I'm not going to get into it now because I won't be commentating on it. I'll just be speaking about the nerfs. We change to the Doom Fangs now, and then we'll change back to the legendary versions with the heavy ammo finder once we've used the Doom Fangs, just to give ourselves you know every opportunity to drop more heavy. Once we get in here, I would suggest these these vandals only really take them out with the sniper if you've got full sniper ammo or you've got enough. Because we want to keep a bit of sniper ammo in case we don't drop any for the servitors. So I have full. So, And because I've got triple tap, reload here and I'm going to actually get the next way. So I've got both of these sets of snipers in my view. And as you can see, it's not, it's not an immediate thing with triple tap. You get... A little bit to recenter your your aim, and that's all the snipers and the va the vandal snipers and the shank snipers gone. Now we're going to take out all the solar shanks that are blocking our way that are facing us. I'll throw a grenade to try and get some detonators attached and do some damage. Uh, and I I literally you'll see it at the boss again, same as another run. I think it was the hunter run. I've got I've got a fastball on the the gauntlets as well. And every time there's fastball, I always mess up the jump, the, the grenades. I always forget that, you know, I forget about how far it can actually be thrown. Now, I had a bit of an issue here, and you'll see. Uh, a void detonator went off, 
which gave me health back, started my health regeneration. But make sure you take both of those invisibles out. As you can see, he had very little left. There is a solar shank here. Once we take this solar shank down, we'll look down to the right, make sure there's none left down there. And we had a lot of shanks up here, so I knew that there wouldn't be many down there. So we're going to put on my heavy ammo finder, give myself every opportunity to drop some heavy. And once we take down this solar shank, then we'll change to the recluse, and we'll go after the tank. Now, I'm, I will use my super again, but only just on the ads going between here. Once we take out the tank and the, the saber shank inside, once we get past that, there's, there's a few ads in the corridors. That's where I'm going to use my super because I've got it. You know, it, it wasn't even that effective. Uh, I don't use my super again after that. So there's no strategy with the super. So we've propped, we've propped the, the perk for the SMG, which makes it, makes it the weapon that, that it is. You know, that really super powerful SMG. Any weapon procs that that buff, the Master at Arms, any, a kill with any weapon procs it. And if you get a kill with, say, your sniper, you don't have to immediately pull out your SMG. I don't know how long it is. It's not long. It's a couple of seconds, I think, you've got. But you can actually... So I could, get, I could have killed that guy with the sniper, maybe got to the top of the stairs pull out the SMG and I would that I would have started the time I would have started from the time I pull out the SMG. So clear this section. We're trying to keep the Master at Arms per proc perked for this captain. Uh, he's got some void detonators on him. Not good for him. And that's him. There's another invisible. And what we'll do, we've got we've got full full ammo, which is really good. We'll just take these two drag out. Now that second drag will try and hide, so always try and get him, because if he, he can slow up your progress for sniping these guys. Take out the three over there, which is propped as you can see, Master at Arms, when I pull it out, it's still got the full timer on it. Grenade will finish off the Saber Shank, and now we move on to the, the ads. I will pop prop, I will pop my Super uh, when I go through here. We've got, we've got where a line rampant's on it. No, we haven't. We're just putting them on now. Make sure you've got the line rampants on before you get to the jumping puzzle. Make it through this section, and then you're into the jumping puzzle. So while I'm while this is playing out on the screen, I'm going to speak a little bit about the nerfs. So we'll start off with, I'm not happy with the Whisper nerf. I'm really not happy with it. I think the fact that this weapon is in the game for the, you know, this this weapon is in its third third iteration, its third different form. It's the third time it's been in the game. It come in as the black camera to start with. And it had the white nail perk working the way that the Whisper has been working for the past little while. Then they nerfed it. Then they brought the black spindle in as an exotic. And it was it came in basically exactly the same as the black hammer. Black hammer wasn't brought forward from D1 year one, so the spindle was the D2 version, but it was made exotic, and it was post nerf state it just reloaded from your reserves so when they bring the whisper in with white nail back to its original original form what did they think was going to happen whenever you could melt a boss you you know the whisper wasn't the one thing you would use but it would give your ammo back and that was its that was its thing so to nerf it again for something they've already experienced with no way still no way for players to predictably generate heavy ammo now i'm not saying you know that we should be rolling in heavy ammo but heavy ammo finders rng i mean i can go through this whole strike with two heavy ammo finders on and get never drop a brick it's rng we that's the big problem the whisper's still the weapon it was i mean the spindle for the war priest in d1 even though it didn't generate heavy was the weapon to use it was the weapon to use. So the Whisper's still going to be the highest DPS I think you can do with a sniper. I know people are saying Darcy because of its fire rate. I'll stick with the Whisper. Uh, because it doesn't need... And that's the thing. People are saying it's not... You know, the Titan can reload and the Warlock can reload. Well, the Warlock can only reload if you've got uh, Lunar Factions on. So now you've freed up an exotic slot. Uh, now it does it for all characters. So it's still a good thing. But not being able to generate heavy is the main problem. 
the nerf to the sleeper simulant, whatever. <laughs> the nerf to Ace of Spades, whatever. They, they, you know, who was using it? Who was predictably? I mean, of uh, the Ace of Spades, I know was getting a, you know, was getting some use, but they've nerfed it so Titans can't two tap. Whatever. Nobody really, nobody's crying about those things. The other thing people are crying about is, you know, people are saying they've took the fun out of the game. I agree. I agree that the, the changes to the exotic armor, but I think the fun was taking out the game, introducing exotics like that, and making them clutch exotics. I, I started to make a video where I spoke about this, where I spoke about the problem with having exotics in the game that were becoming must-have exotics because they gave you super back instead of making your super unique. Celestial Nighthawk is a perfect example of an exotic making your super unique. Uh, if, if you've never watched any of, my, any of these runs before, I'll explain Trevor. I'm going to drop down behind him. I'm going to run up. I'm going to follow him to the left. I'm going to do L1, L2. Come back, jump across the centre where there's an open centre section. Go back to the right, do R1, then go and do R2, and then I'm out of the room. I will never see Trevor again. So there's no hiding from Trevor if you use that strategy. So that's kind of what that is. So the exotics. I, I think the problem with nerfing those exotics right now is there aren't a lot of really good ones that, you know... I think if they were going to nerf them, they should they should have been... I mean, maybe, maybe that's going to be the thing. Maybe the nerf happening on June the 4th, they'll introduce other must-have exotics that hopefully don't give you super back because it's just... It's just so boring to be, you know, all right, have you got a warlock? We can only do this if we've got, you know, uh, have you got a hunter, sorry, because warlock hasn't really been affected. Phoenix Protocol has. But it's only been affected that one person can't generate their own super back. You know? So I don't really have a problem with the exotic armor changes because all they've done is you can't regenerate your own super continuously. You do need people to help or masterwork weapons or whatever, kills or whatever. But not having things to replace them. And if you're going to take away our ability to, you know, after the months that spent some people getting the Whisper with full catalyst, you know, people are talking about the Outbreak Perfected, that when are they going to nerf this? Well, they, they, they left the Whisper for a year. So we did get a year of it. You know, that's the only plus side on it. We got a year of this thing. And the crazy thing is, it's not even in the top five most used PvE heavies. So the only reason I can see they've nerfed it is because this one of the nightfall boss, the one of the raid bosses, must have a really big crit that you can stand back and crit, or the six player activity. You know, the whispers got to be doing and generating infinite super. So if you're going to take our stuff away from us, Bungie, you need to give us stuff. You can't just say, oh, is it, no, uh, your way of getting super back, your way of getting heavy back. Uh, we don't like that. What were you thinking was going to happen when you made it? <laughs> Did you think people weren't going to use it the way that it, you know, weren't going to follow the text instruction on the exotic? Of course they are. You should have gave us stuff to make our supers more unique and give them different abilities. And some insurmountable skull for uh, uh, Celestial Nighthawk, Luna Faction Boots. Stuff that gave her supers, you know, that extra thing. That's where I have the problem. You know, it, it, there is a not respect in our time, but they gave us a year of the whisper. The biggest issue is, and it's the it's the issue that it raises. The biggest issue is, we we can't reliably get heavy. We can't reliably get heavy. Give us our bloody synths back. <laughs> That's the basis of it. Five minutes cooldown on a synth. Let us have this, the ability to resynth. Rant over. So now we're going at the boss, the strategy on for the, for the boss on the Titan. Seems almost redundant after all that, speaking about this. But it's important because this is different to the ones I've done. Drop down, we're going to snipe the Vandals as normal. Use the boat to take out the, the Dreg. And then we change. The strategy changes a little bit. We're going to be in repeatable positions where we can repeatably do damage to the to the servitors while staying as safe as you possibly can, I suppose. Now, this relies on... This strategy doesn't rely on it. It's just the time thing does. So, 
you can use whisper. If you put three consecutive whisper shots into the boss, it will do the same thing. But the problem is, it could the the the, the reason I didn't use the whisper is because it's unreliable. If you put three whisper shots in the boss, you want the boss to go all the way around to the opposite side that he's at now, so that you get both servers out straight away. If you put three whisper shots on them, it could bring the tanks out as well. So I'm going to put, as you can see, five crits is enough to get him to go around and bring the next server out. So we're going to go over to this right hand side, back away so we're out of the way of the turret. And we're just going to put a few crits on the server, which is enough to kill it. It's unfortunate there that he teleported away from one of the shots, but it's all good. One, one special. Now, what you've got to watch out for, as you can see, I've moved a little bit forward. Now, the boss can hit me. So, we're just going to drop down and back up against here. We can still see where, where, where Shanks, but now the boss can't hit me. Take these Shanks down, and we're going to go, basically, to the opposite side. So, we, we were... We're going to go top left underneath the turret so the turret can't shoot us. We can shield ourselves from the arc shanks that are above us, top, above right, as you can see there. We can shield ourselves from those. And now we'll do the exact same thing. We'll take down the... Now, the boss can get a view on you, but you'll see what happens here. We just add him in as a crit. And another crit. that He will go now. And we get the last crit. So now what we're going to do is change to solar, take down those shanks. Once we take down those shanks, we can change to arc. And it's arc for the rest of the time there. Now we've got six shots. Now I will say, I do miss. I miss once on the tank, and I miss once on the boss. But because I've got where, where I missed on the boss, I, I wasn't too bothered about it because we were trying to finish the boss. I knew if I'd have... I, I, fired too quickly a couple of times but I knew if I'd have missed him he had that little health that my primary sniper would kill him so we took down those shanks I think there's one left up so I changed to magnetic grenade just for occasions like that and that takes out two of the shanks so as you can see I'm just checking there that that shank one of them might do that when you hit it or it gets damaged by explo by explos explosive the elemental explosion, he'll hide, he'll drop down, and he'll, he won't want any more of it. But if you just change your focus, don't change weapons, just change your focus, there's a good chance he'll come back. If not, you could have just pushed up here, it was only one, you could have pushed up and killed him up here. So we've got full ammo, make sure you're fully reloaded, we'll jump up on the box, and we're just going to put a couple of crits on the boss here. There we go, and now up. And focus on the tanks. Right tank first. Make sure that you're still in cover from the left tank. And you can take them both from here. But as you'll see. I do miss on this tank. Just trying to rush my shots. Take your time. And this is. I think this is where, where I missed this shot here. There. And just rush the next shot. So now. I've got three heavy. Which is fine. I don't need any more than three, but, you know, unfortunately, in two weeks' time, this this won't work, which is it's really kind of sad, but hopefully we get something else. I have been thinking of another strategy that, that, that could work for here that I'll maybe test, but, uh, yep, just, as you can see, I'm taking a little bit more time just to make sure I hit my crits. Now... Part of the reason I wasn't too bothered is because I was pretty sure I dropped heavy. But I didn't actually go looking for it because of the time. So now I'm going to look for the invisibles. If you stay far enough back, the invisibles won't push. The, 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 the orange bar one will, but we've took out the two red bar. There's the orange one coming out of view. I, I've got them. There we go. That's all the invisibles. Take down these shanks. The arc shanks over on the right, and it's just you and the boss. Two shanks and a vandal. You shouldn't get any more ads now. So when you're fighting the boss, the boss is... This is what happens when you've got fastball on and you forget. And you throw it all the way to the back of the map. When, when you're attacking the boss, what I do is those shots loop. So I can still shoot, I can still shoot, and now I move. You know, just make sure you move before they land on the ground. 
Now get into a routine of getting your shots off. And you shouldn't shouldn't have, as you can see, I'm in a rhythm now. And then you can start to speed up a little bit. No problem at all. So I rushed a shot here. And that's where I missed. But it's no problem. Because we've got boss spec on my primary. And that's it. Now we'll take down the two shanks. And the vandal. The vandal first and the two shanks. And that's how you do it. Flawless run on the Titan guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate everybody that's watched the videos over the past couple of weeks. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for getting me to the thousand subs. Makes me excited to see where we could go from here. But thank you all very much. Uh, if you like this video, leave it a like. If you've got any questions, leave a comment. And if you think other people will like it, don't forget to share. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.